This is Courtney on duty on Sunday. And me and my husband are out eating. So, babe, you gotta look at the little dot over there because that's right there. Right there. Yeah. You get my joint right. <laughs> Go ahead. Only they knew. <laughs> what are you doing? Right, oh my god okay so remember okay hi guys this is ordinary beauty 07 so i got hubby here with me and this is just really impromptu because i need to do a video for the week so i just asked him if he wouldn't mind asking some questions or answering some questions um i okay so our our marriage video got a lot of views so i decided that i would kind of impromptu uh just, <laughs> why are you looking? i didn't say nothing why are you nervous Oh my gosh. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So anyway, I'm going to ask him just some off the cuff questions that I think you guys would want to know. And let's just see what he says. So as far as a man looking for a female, like as far as a wife, how, how would a man know that he's ready? Uh, that's a good question. It depends on where you're at in life, uh, whether you're a teenager or whether you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s. Time you get to your 40s, I imagine you kind of have a pretty good idea if you haven't been through that type of relationship yet. But majority of us, you know, we're seeking out love as a teenager and when we get in college. And, and I would say, you know, it, it works different for other people. You know, for me, it was that sense of um, I felt like something was missing if I wasn't around that person, that being you. Um, you know, but I think when you have a yearning that, hey, I need to be around that person, you know, something's missing, um, you know, and it's not necessarily the puppy love stage. It's really about everything. And it's not, you know, per se, the physical part. It's more or less, hey, I need that person to lift me up. I need that person to support me, support my dreams, support my visions. You know, for us, we met in, in college and we had nothing, you know, we had a lot of dreams, a lot of aspirations, but we had nothing. And we tried to lift each other up and support each other through those dreams. And we kind of set out what our game plan was and goals. And, you know, I think we, we accomplished the majority of the stuff that we set out as kids. Um, and we were blessed enough to work through all the trials and tribulations of any relationship because there is going to be tons. Okay, so you, that was really good. You answered that, that very good. But because you're a newbie, you don't know to look at that little dot. Okay, I'll uh, look at the dot. <laughs> so, babe, um, how did you know I was the one? That's a good question. Uh, I think with a anything, with any type of relationship, whether it's me and you or um, just relationships in general, I don't think you initially know. You know, I think some people have this thing that's love at first sight maybe it's lust at first sight. Um, but I don't think it's a situation where I knew that you were the one from day one. I think it was through our relationship, our struggles, you being there, um, us having common bonds. And to the point is, you know, people always ask, well, how do you know if that's the one? You know, I, I've heard that a lot over the years. And for me, it was, and I think it just in general is, do you miss that person? Is that is there a yearning for you to be around that person all the time? Okay, if you're not around that person, you know, do do you feel like something's missing? Okay, and also, how do they lift you up? I mean, anybody can be there for you when you have everything. Are you there when there are struggles, financial struggles, personal struggles, family struggles? Are you there to support that person, and can you be? You know, can you add to the equation? One of the things we've always talked about is what do you bring to the table? And it has nothing to do with financial. It is what do you do as far as my spiritual upliftment and what do you do as far as making me a better person and supporting my dreams? And I think that's what you should be looking for, whether you're male or female, is looking for that, that type of person. I think we all fall into the trap of it's all about looks. It's all about they have to fit a certain profile, a certain height, a certain skin color, a certain this, a certain that. Love comes in all shapes and forms, and you just got to make sure that mentally and, and physically that, uh, you know, and more mentally that, that you guys are in line, and especially spiritually. Mm. Okay, that was good. That was good. I even learned some stuff I didn't know. Okay, so for the female out there that says, I've been looking, I'm searching, I'm trying to find my right one, 
Um, how do I go about doing that? What would you say? I think the first thing I ask is where are you looking? Uh, I think people in general, whether it's male or female, we look in the wrong places. We're going to the club. We're going to the lounge. We're going to all mm -hmm. these places to find love. And I'm not saying, you know, the cliche, you find them in the supermarket and you find them in church. But truthfully, you find people in random, odd places. You know, we met in the mall, okay? Not that I was going there looking for, for a, a new person. It just, we saw each other. There was an initial attraction there. And guess what? We exchanged information. And then, you know, lo and behold, geez, 20. Uh, and we are married 24 years. Correct. Been together 20. But that, that initial conversation was over 25 years ago. But going back to it is where are you? The number one place thing I would say is where are you looking? Number one, I wouldn't say you can look any particular way. If you're looking, going to a particular place or whatever setting, trying to find a man or a female, it's just not going to work. I mean, what I would tell females out there is just always keep, keep, you know, keep your antennas up. You never know when that right person, it could be the gas station, it could be the supermarket, it could be your job, it could be a bunch of different places. But I think we sometimes don't have our receptors up or we're going through a phase in it, you know, that we're hurt from a pre previous relationship and we're just not willing to accept, even though it might be the perfect person, we're really not trying to give that person a chance because maybe I was hurt by a previous boyfriend or whatever the case might be. Or you might just be going through, you know, a, a certain trial in your life that's just a difficult time and you just don't feel like dealing with somebody and having a type of relationship where you're not ready. But guess what? God puts people in our lives and, and we have to figure out, regardless of timing and situation, that maybe this person might be the one. And I'm not saying just because you feel that that person's the one, they're the one. Because sometimes people are there for a season, okay? That season could be to get you to the next level. And then when that season's over, maybe it's just preparing you for the true person you should be with. So... Just you know, all, all I'm saying is make sure that you're constantly aware, constantly giving people opportunities um, to at least hear what they have to say. And you will be able to pretty much weed out a lot of people out from the initial thing, whether it's a spiritual thing, whether it's, you know, how that person makes you feel. You'll know pretty quick um, if it's worth going to the next step. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So let's do one last one. Okay. Okay. So what would you say to a female that has been in a relationship with a male for a while mm -hmm. and she is not, well, she thought maybe that he's the one or she's trying to make him the one. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say um, as far as, you know, someone which is really in love and they know this is not the right person or maybe not feel that it's the right person? What would you say? Well, there's a lot of people out there, I think, that hang in relationships whether it's the lust aspect of it, but in the back of their mind, you know this person is not the person that you want to have a family with, have kids with, you know, it just, you know, it could be a financial thing, maybe they're, or maybe a spiritual thing that they're just not on the right accord with you, but you just deal with it because there's some aspect of what they offer that just has you bound up. What I would tell you is sometimes you have to go forward before you go backwards. And I know it's going to hurt I know it's going to be difficult to let that person go, but one thing I've always learned in life, whether it's business or it's a relationship, sometimes in order to progress in your life, you have to get rid of some of that weight and that bondage that's holding you back from your true blessing. Um, there's somebody out there that's going to respect you. It's going to help build you up. It's going to always be there um, to help you. That person you're with maybe, like I said, they're there for a season or they offer a certain aspect that you like, but guess what? You know in your heart, and what I would tell you is don't waste a lot of time. That's one of the most valuable commodities that we have in life is time. And if you're wasting time on something that you know is not going to bear fruit, it's just a bad look. Uh, reinvest that time and give somebody else the opportunity that you might be able to make that thing work and get rid of that baggage and that dead weight. I like it. I like it, Faye. That's good. Um, because we're valuable 
as women, we are valuable. Our, 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 our mates are valuable. And it is, it gives us the perfect opportunity to get with who is made for us and not to spend that, uh, that time, like my husband said, wasted on a relationship that won't, uh, it won't bear fruit just because we want to be in a relationship. Right? Yeah. And I, and I, and the last part I'll touch on it is all he, God made people to have you know, we're, we're put on this earth to have not necessarily relationships, but we're here for companionship. And I think the mistake that we all make is we're so seeking companionship that as soon as one relationship ends, we're trying to yearn to that next relationship. And sometimes we don't we don't filter out or it's kind of like a job interview. We, we're just accepting the first application that comes across our desk as long as they fit certain profiles. You got to do a little bit more deep investigation before you open your heart and open your life and especially if you have children involved you know you don't want to just open your home to anybody so what I would tell you is after relationship ends I get it all of us have a sense of, of want we want to be loved by others don't fall into that trap make sure you do your investigation I'm not saying don't give people a chance but what I will tell you is Make sure that it's just not a situation where you just need to be with somebody. Because that's there's a ton of people out there, females and men, that can't be alone. they always going to have a boyfriend or girlfriend or what have you just because it's that seeking a companionship and they don't know what to do with themselves if they don't have somebody to talk to at night and do those certain things. So all I'm saying is just take your time and guess what? God's going to bless you. Absolutely. I agree. He did that for us. And although our relationship is not perfect, we've definitely had our own ups and downs, but it's just the compromise. It's the care and the respect for one another that makes sure. Okay. All right. The video keeps going out, so we're going to wrap it up. I don't even remember what I was <laughs> At the end of the day, all these words are, are great, but you got to have your own action plan. Okay, have a set, have a sense of what you're trying to accomplish in your life, and set those priorities. And I'm not saying set a set a uh, application so difficult nobody can pass, but make sure that you do do your homework before you let people into your heart and your soul and your mind. Amen. Okay. Well, we're gonna call this one a wrap. Good job. Our first video. <laughs> I'll take it. At least I know where to look from now on. <laughs> It's hard when you start filming because you really got to get used to it. And once you do, then it just comes out great. So, all right. Well, thanks so much. And to my hubby, thanks to you all for watching. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Bye-bye. Peace.